guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Sebastian Kize and this is my channel. If you're a regular tegula, a regular liker, a regular sharer, honey, thank you so much once again, baby, for clicking on another video. And if you are new here today, welcome. Click that subscribe button so that you join the regular diggulas, okay? Come na diggula channel, you're gonna enjoy it here, okay? So, as you can see by the title, guys, today's video is a story time. I'm going to be sharing with you guys my story about how I lost my mom a month before moving abroad. Okay, so as you guys already know, I am an expat living in China, in Hefei, and I've been here now for over three years. And I, you know, have told the story before in terms of what happened on my first uh, trip to China in terms of how I first came here in 2018 and how I quit my job after one month and had to go back to South Africa. So if you missed that story time, I'm going to insert it somewhere up here so that you guys go and see that story time. Once you've watched that video, you can come back or you can watch this first and watch that next. It's up to you. But anyway, so I wanted to tell you guys also what was going on in my personal life, um, mainly because I have been getting a lot of DMs from people who are applying to work abroad as, as um, expats or teachers and are having a lot of hurdles. May it be finances, family, um, COVID, so many things, so many hurdles uh, that are stopping people from you know, living their best lives and living their dreams. And so I really wanted to tell the story because you know I thought about how should I you know, respond to these DMs. And I wanted to kind of do a video for, at first I wanted to do a video about what you should do, what are the tips and kind of you know, encourage you guys with Bible verses and you know, some tips about perseverance and hard work. But then I also thought, you know what? Sometimes it's good to share a testimony and tell your story in hopes that that will encourage someone. So that's what I decided to do today. So if you enjoy this kind of content and you'd like to hear my story, please sit back, relax, and yeah, let's get the story's time started. Okay guys, so like uh, many of you know, I am from South Africa. I am from Pinamarit which is a city in KwaZulu-Natal and I was working um, in 2018 in Durban which is another city in KwaZulu-Natal uh, for a non-profit and I was a fundraising and marketing manager and at that time guys you know I was three years into my job or two years into my job and you know I start I didn't like my job anymore I wanted better for myself I wanted to live abroad I wanted to make more money I wanted to do things for myself for my family I wanted to see the world and that was one of the major reasons why in January 2018 I start I decided to start applying for jobs abroad so I looked up stuff on the web teaching abroad in Dubai in China and China of course were one of the few places that were really like at the time super like oh my gosh we're looking for expats we're looking for uh, you know South Africans who can teach English so it was a huge craze so I applied and English first actually EF, EF were the first to uh, contact me and I had my interview in March April uh, May you know they told me you got the job and if you missed that story time, check that out where I talk about the whole process and things like that. But yeah, I got the process started um, in May. And at the same time in my personal life, I, I just found out, I found out that my mom wasn't well. Um, she was very ill. And around the time, our relationship wasn't at the best of places. Um, it wasn't, you know, we were obviously very, very close. Um, way before like always been close but 2018 was a tricky year 2017 was a tricky year uh, for our relationship and all I'm gonna say is is like all I'm gonna say is is that like you know stepfathers are pandemic on their own okay they are a Panasonic they are a Telenova on their own okay and so yeah that's all I'm gonna say about that <laughs> so you know so at that time I was dealing with that. Uh, mom is ill, and I remember I ran to her bedside like you know nothing happened, and we were you know back together again. And you know I was super excited. Like at that time, I knew that I got the job, but when I saw how ill she was, I was like, yo, this is getting real. Like I was like, should I tell her? And you know one of the things that I regret today is not telling her. But nevertheless, I didn't tell her because I really wanted her to focus on getting better. Um, and around that time guys, you know, she was seeing a lot of different doctors and so it was very like, you know We were trying to figure out how to get her the best care and so um, it was really tough 
And so she was my major why. She was my major why to move abroad as well. I wanted to do better for her. I wanted to do things for her. My mom was like my biggest supporter, guys. When I tell you, if she was around today and she saw my YouTube and all, she would share on her WhatsApp at Bozanza Wani Ganyam. I didn't have no subscribe. Like she would be on her Facebook, she would be everywhere telling people about my YouTube. That's how she was. Like she would support me, and you know she, you know I didn't grow up with her, but um she really basically moved away and got a, another job in another city, and I grew up with my maternal grandparents, so that you know she could make money, and so I could go to good schools, the best schools, have the best opportunities, and and you know and have a really full life and so you know i i was so looking forward to making sure that i take care of her and i do things for her and just to give you a little bit of background um i am the only child between my mom and dad and then i also have a half sister on my mom's side Ubuche, and yeah we are basically like sisters like we don't think of half what we are sisters and um, we basically grew up together so she and uh, my sister and my mom were my big whys you know those are the reasons why i wanted to also live abroad so that i can make the money and do things for them and make them happy and and hopefully get them out here as well to see the world you know what i mean so we go into the hospitals we we i'm there you know as much as i can i see her three times a day visiting hours uh fortunately at the time she was in hospital in durban and i was working in the same city so my company had a company car so i could get out there and see her and you know i, I when i think back now um one thing about this channel honey we're gonna reflect and we're gonna you know things that you know I wasn't able to talk about four years ago. I'm I feel really proud of myself that I can put up the camera and talk about this and share my story. And I think you know when I look back at how I, when I used to go visit her, like I really wanted to focus on her healing and focus on you know being there as a daughter. And I couldn't bring myself to tell her about this really awesome opportunity, mainly because I just felt like you know what it's not the right time. And so like that. Uh, that happened. We were going through hospitals, and um, at the same time, EF is out here, like saying "spa," send this, send this, send this. And um, at first, she got better, and then it just got worse at the beginning of June. And uh, I remember I picked up some weights. I wasn't eating well. I was going to hospital three times a day. Like I was, I was basically like going on flight mode, guys. Like autopilot like literally like i my body and my spirit had left my body like my spirit had left my body and it was just like my body just moving around you know what i mean and um in june uh she was transferred to a hospital in peter Maritzburg, which is my hometown so now if i wanted to see her i'd have to wait till the weekends and travel back which is like an hour and a half away from where i was working so like another weekend i went um it was like towards the end of june and so i went and on a friday i was there saturday i remember that saturday um i was looking at her and i'm like ma like like at that time uh she wasn't super like responsive and she wasn't very talkative but she knew like i, I would announce like i'd be like i'm here it's Bafle and stuff like that and so she knew i was there and stuff and so i would tell her like ma don't give up like don't give up don't give up you've got this don't give up for us you know and i left that saturday sunday i come back again uh in the morning afternoon and evening and in that evening time uh you know i say my goodbyes to her and i tell her i'll see you on 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 next friday and stuff and like she i grabbed her hand i remember like it was it it, was, it felt like a normal sunday you know what i mean so i go home which is uh in still pretty work so i was gonna wake up on monday morning and go to work so then i go to bed i sleep like normal and guys at like 3 a.m in the morning yo i have the worst pain in my abdomen okay i was like what is happening i felt like i was dying okay and i scream and i'm like in the house and there was my grandfather and my uncle and my uncle wakes up and he's like are you okay what's going on and i'm like you need to take me to the hospital right now something is wrong you know and so we get into the car and we go on the way to the hospital don't we get a flat tire the tire pump uh, tire punches or whatever and then he has to change the wheel longest 15 minutes of my life okay i am in pain and so he gets back into the car we get to the hospital 
get to the hospital the doctor does an uh b ultrasound and he checks everything and then he's like yo you have a huge ovarian cyst wrapped around your ovary your right ovary and you need to go into surgery immediately like emergency surgery and i'm like what it's like yeah you need to go into surgery so i'm like okay so i call my aunt who's my mom's sister she comes and stuff and everyone you know who can comes to see me and so i had to notify people at work like i'm not coming i'm going into surgery later that day anyway so i'm waiting for my surgery to happen and like around 3 4 p.m i get an email from ef and remember i told you guys that on that um Sunday like when I saw when I saw my mom I remember thinking at that moment like no you can't leave her like this like she was not well and um, I remember thinking just on Monday next day you're gonna email EF and tell them listen thank you for this wonderful opportunity but I'm not gonna take it like my family needs me here and um, when I got when I saw that email in the hospital I was like you know what I'm gonna deal with this tomorrow morning after my surgery but I'm gonna email them and tell them I'm not coming you know what I mean like more than ever like right now like there's no way I'm gonna leave because at that time they were preparing me to leave in July and it's June you know what I mean like towards the end of June June 25 and so I'm like no I'm not coming you know in my head so then uh, my aunt comes in to see me around 4 p.m. to see how I'm doing and I'm like, what are you doing here? You need to go see mom. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm fine. Go see mom. And she's like, no, you need to check on you too and stuff. So she gives me stuff and whatever. And then I'm like, okay, just text me and whatever how the, the how you guys go when you go see mom. I still have my phone at that point. So then they go and then she doesn't text me. And I'm like, that's weird. You know what I mean? So then 10 o'clock comes, 10 in the evening, and I'm getting prepped for my surgery. So they take my phone away. Obviously, I go into surgery. I wake up on Tuesday morning um, at like 7, 8 a.m. I look around and there's like no one here. And I'm like, where's my family? You know, I feel like someone should be here. I wake up from surgery, someone should be here. <laughs> and then like midday, I go, nothing. And I'm like, what in the... So I, I, I asked the nurses, I'm like, okay, nurse, please can I have my phone? And they're like, make up some whack excuse. And now I know later on, like they all knew what was going on. They all knew what was going on. So I... um. They couldn't give me the phone. They would, weren't allowed to give me the phone. And I remember thinking, why aren't these people giving me my phone? I got so upset. Tuesday, don't have my phone, no family. Wednesday, I wake up with like a, a vengeance. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to need my phone now. I need to check on my mom, okay? Can somebody give me my phone? And the head nurse comes and she's like, ma'am, please calm down. Just get some rest. Your scar is really big. Like you guys already know my scar. I showed you guys. But at that time, obviously, they had like my stitches and stuff. And she's like, you need to relax, sit down and sleep. And so they sedate me and I sleep. Then later on that Wednesday, um, my family comes and they tell me um, that my mom had passed away. Obviously, I was distraught. Like I was in total pieces and obviously they had to be super careful um and just to kind of wait it out a bit because i was also in hospital in drips just out of surgery and so she had passed away on that monday when i was getting into surgery she was um she had uh, passed away so at the same time actually so um that's why i said like, i only found out on that wednesday and um sure it was insane guys like that time i remember i it was just like my spirit had left my body i couldn't believe it like i i it was like i was living in a dream you know and so i get discharged on that friday the funerals on saturday i wasn't involved in any of the planning like there was no way i was in hospital couldn't like wasn't involved i literally got discharged saturday i wake up at my mom's funeral like the person where I was, you know, in and out every single day in the hospital with her. So I go to the funeral. Um, then that Tuesday after, EF are back on it. Spa, I go. Flight has, it's flight, uh, your deadline's coming. You've missed the deadline for people who are flying out in July. But you can still do it for the people flying out in August. Come on, you can do this. And so in that moment, I knew. So... To give you guys a bit of, a bit of background, um, like I said, I'm the only child between my mom and my dad, but my sister was an orphan at that point because our mom had passed away and her dad had passed away. So the whole ball game changed. Like I had to pull up my girl, my big girl socks and really 
you know, we didn't have a standalone property where we can call our home. Uh, we, we literally had to, like, I had to pull up my big girl socks and, you know, build a future for us and do the things and make sure that we were taken care of. And moving abroad would give me that opportunity. So I emailed EF back and I'm like, okay, yes, let's do this. I'm doing everything. I'm going to the visa office. I'm going to pay this 2000 I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay this. And so I did it. And in August, I flew out. And I remember my family and friends, everyone were like, Spa, are you sure you want to do this? Like, you just lost your mom. You need to grieve. You need to be with your family. And I just, there was this overwhelming feeling of go, go. Like, I, it was like a spiritual push of go. You need this. And it's funny now because um, after the month in China, I went back to South Africa because I wasn't happy with EF. But... I'm super grateful for that one month uh, to see the world and to see China and to see how my life could be amazing, you know? And so I got that motivation. And sometimes, you know, I truly believe whatever happens in your journey, God has put that in that journey so you can learn from, learn from that situation. And so when I left, everyone was like, don't go, don't go. And I knew why I wanted to leave. My sister and I were the big whys. One of my biggest whys had left us, but... I truly believe that she gave me that push. You know, before she passed away, I wasn't, I don't think I was gonna get on that flight, you know. I think I was gonna be very hesitant. Her her, her state, her like her health went, went really deteriorated. She wasn't well, and I didn't know, I didn't think I was gonna be able to leave her. And so God works in mysterious ways, guys, because also how that week uh, of her passing, if I was not in hospital, I would have been hands on with the funeral and everything. And mentally, I don't know if I was going to be able to, to make it, you know, and be able to leave my family. Um, and so God isolated me from that situation and basically putting me on bed rest and putting me in bed and having my family and everyone else deal with that. And me just showing up at the funeral and grieving my mom, you know, um, was also a blessing, you know. And so that's how I see it. And um, yeah, I went to China and um after one month i went back to south africa and then i returned again so um yeah guys that is my testimony that is how my story happened now today i'm here three years um you know mentally in a really good place um really owning every emotion that comes up and being present with every emotion that comes up and you know health i'm doing really well mentally i'm doing really well family my sister's doing really well and uh, she's in university now in first year at vids like you know it's like god has been so good and god has been doing amazing things in our lives and um you know so i say this to say this is my testimony this is proof that god will see you through and if you forget and if you 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 know try to depend on your own knowledge and understanding reflect back on the situations where god saw you through remind yourself on how god has been good in your life and this story i always go back to it whenever i feel like yo i can't get through the situation or how do i handle this or like internal you know conflict about anything i remind myself and i I remind myself of this story of how God saw myself and my sister through and um you know, in all the DMs that I get, you know, about how you guys are really having a tough time, maybe finances, personal, uh, COVID, whatever situation, know that God will see you through. Don't give up. You know, if you have your why and you know your why, my why, you know, was my mom. And when she passed away, my why shifted to my sister. But both were always a major why. And so if you have your why and you hold on to it, when there's, you know, you know, so many things happening, so many hurdles, if you have your why, keep your eyes and, and focus on that why keep going through that will see you through any situation trust in god pray and it will be okay so um yeah guys that is the story time i wanted to share with you guys um thank you so much for holding space for me and you know just you know allow me to tell my story um i will see you guys in the next video Mwah.